Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. Hi, I'm Jessica Faust. And we are literary agents who have taken our popular blog to YouTube to discuss all things publishing. Yep. Um, today is everybody's favorite timing, everybody's favorite topic, the timing of publishing. Oh, it's been, uh, it's been a lot lately. It, yep, it's been a lot. Everything feels super slow. And we wanted to, over the course of three videos, actually break down why. Yeah. Why is publishing so damn slow? Um, so today we're going to start with the first leg of the race, um, or should we say the first leg of the marathon, because publishing oh. is a marathon. Not Look at you. <laughs> um, yeah. So the first leg of the marathon is uh, your querying and submission stage for you to agents. Yeah. Um, so we figured we'd start with why that takes so damn long. Yeah. Um, I, I, can I start with the biggest reason? Yeah. You people just keep writing books. So many of them. So many books. Yeah. So, well, let's start there because an a on average, I would say an agent can receive anywhere from two to five, six, seven, eight hundred queries a month. Like mm -hmm. there is no set number of queries that we get. And I will say in the past year and a half to two years, mine alone have nearly doubled. They've doubled. No, they've, they've doubled. And, and I, you know, I, it differs from agent to agent. Um, and it differs really from genre to genre. So a lot of it isn't necessarily agent specific, but you know, an agent who's open to a wider range of genres is gonna get more than an agent who has a narrow range. But um, no matter what, it's a lot. I will say when I'm open to picture books, I get nearly 750 queries a month. I believe it. It's crazy. It takes you three to five minutes to read every query letter times that by 500, it's hours a month. Hours. And that's just the query letters. Exactly. That's just that the doesn't letter. That doesn't include sample pages or um, the actual submissions. Right. And, and when you are reading those sample pages, each query can take 10 to 15 minutes. And when you're reading the actual submission, I mean, depending on how much you read of it, it can take you hours. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I mean, I think on average... I don't think I can get through five submissions a week, um, but I'm requesting, I just checked my statistics and I'm requesting about 30 submissions a month. So that's more than a month's worth of submissions. So, you know, right there I'm behind, but to backtrack all of that, you know, that's if we're on top of queries. That, right. And that means that I have nothing else to do. Right. So queries for an agent is actually one of our last priorities if you could yeah. believe it yeah yeah it is because our first priority is our clients yeah and you know at the beginning of our careers it was really fun because we didn't have clients and so we just got to read queries um but then thank goodness we have clients because without clients we would be no longer in business um and that's our priority and you know any given day, it can depend on what's happening. It can be phone calls and Zoom calls and, you know, negotiating contracts and reviewing contracts. It could be doing revisions. Um, you know, we talked about reading submissions, but we need to do the same for our clients. So if I have three clients who this month sent me their next manuscripts, that's three books I have to read this month. Yeah. Um, and I say, I think we talk about this a lot behind the scenes too, like there are like significant level ups in, in being an agent. Like you go from yeah. like you said, having no clients, right? And then suddenly you have 10 clients, no sales. And then suddenly you have 10 sales, 20 clients. Like you just keep accumulating clients and books and work to do. And they're going to naturally in that sort of process be slips and surges where you're like, okay, I have no time to read a query or you're back in there like, I really want a new client and you're reading every query every day. Yeah. So there is no rhyme or reason to when we get to the queries, but they're always in the back of an agent's mind. Like we always know I have a thousand queries I need to read and I need to do them soon. Like they're always there, but we can't always get to them when we want to. Yeah, and it's interesting because you talked about the level up in an agent's career where clients are concerned, but there's a leveling up in the queries too. Right. Where as an agent, um, gets, becomes more successful and gets more clients and agent's name gets out there more. Yeah. So the number of queries 
um, increases, but so do things like the number of offer notices. So, you know, I might receive more offer notices because now I'm getting submissions and queries that are getting more offers from other agents. And that's going to change the way I read because now I'm going to have to scramble at times and drop other things to get to that. And then the more I drop to read that submission, then the more I have to go back and catch up. Referrals as well, too. You get to a point like yeah. in my picture book list, I'm at a point where I'm not open to unsolicited queries. And anybody who I do take on is through referral, just because you can't take on another query in that space. Like so. And then, you know, what we can take on a, a genre or an age group that will change and availability will open. Yeah. So for an agent to read those queries, it's it's very much like what can I prioritize right now? Yeah. And then how can I just keep shuffling things so that I get you the response you need, but also am not drowning in queries that I can't read or can't take on anyway. Yeah, I tend to read queries every day. Um, and that's probably seven days a week. Not all agents do that. And that's fine. Everybody has to work in their own way. Um, for me, it's pretty simple, especially if I'm waiting anywhere. Like, you know, you're waiting in a doctor's office or I'm sitting in my car waiting for something for, you know, the groceries to come out the curbside pickup, whatever it is. It's my natural instinct not to open social media, but to open my queries. And I will do a few on a regular basis, which is why if you receive responses from me, they sometimes are at weird times. Right, my um, response is almost always at like 11 p.m. But yeah. hey, I'm reading them because I'm like sitting there watching something or and I'm just idly reading my queries and it's just easy. Yeah, it's easy for me. And that's what's been really helpful with us with Query Manager. Right. It's easy shout for me to, to read. Manager. <laughs> yeah, shout out, we do constant shout out. If you are an agent watching this and you are not yet on Query sure. Manager, you need to check your time management because Query Manager will make your life easier. Yeah, and authors love it too because it takes the guesswork out of what should be in your query letter. We should really ask them if they want to advertise on our YouTube. <laughs> right, like just get one of those little pop-ups across the bottom of the screen. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so ultimately it's about time and priority priorities. So clients always come first um, and submissions, and, and it doesn't mean we don't want to read the queries and submissions. And, and you know, I think we say we prioritize them last, which is true, but that doesn't mean we don't want new clients. It's just that we have to be in a headspace to be ready to read those. And if we have 40 things going on, it's just not the most immediate concern. I mean, the most right. immediate concerns are submissions that we can get out because we don't make money unless we have, we sell books and we don't sell books unless we put them on submission. Contracts to negotiate for obvious reasons. And there are two stages to contract negotiation. There's the upfront, we got the offer, we negotiate. And then when there's, there's when the contract actually comes in and we need to negotiate the physical contract. Those are two huge time consuming things. And then it's reading submissions and things for our clients. And then it's, it's just other general office stuff. Like, right making sure we are tracking everything and following up on submissions and chasing down payments. And I don't even know what else off the top of my head, but all of those things, making our YouTube videos. Yeah, right. Particularly agents who have, you know, some sort of support role or additional role in their agency. Yeah. There are things that those agents are relied on for to keep the agency running. So like all of that really does come before we get the chance to even look at our queries. But like yeah. you said, we all want to build our list. We all want to be a, you know, one of those agents that you think of when you're querying. Um, but all of this also helps us get there too. So we will read your query, but that's why it takes so long on our end. And then also consider on your end, when you got those queries out, are you able to send a big batch at one time? Um, all of that does play into it. And it's a long process. <laughs> It's a long process, but you have some control over it. You can't control how long agents take and how fast we can read and what our schedules are like, but you can control how many you get out there and how, you know, keep in mind that the best way to kick an agent in the pants is to get an offer of representation from another agent. At that point, you've given us no choice, but now we have two weeks and we have to read it. Um, so the more you can move towards making that happen, the faster you move us. Agreed. So we hope that was helpful. Come back here next week when we talk about why it takes so damn long for us to sell your book. <laughs> yes, all the steps that go into that.
And we'll see you back here next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.